A sadistic child abuser goes for a walk. He's in a park. He sees a child. Can you take us inside his mind at that moment, what it is that he's thinking or, or feeling that is propelling him towards that child in, in an attempt to lure? They, they see them as instruments um, for, their own, for their own gratification. They, one offender said, I have desperately tried to turn them into human beings. I try to see them as children. I try to see them as people, and I'm unable to. I, I just can't do it. They're simply there for me to live out the fantasies that are in my head. Wow. That is a level of psychosis that's unimaginable to most of us. Do you understand it? I have been, in, I have been face to face with them many times, so I know, I know who they are. I know when they say it, what they're going to say. I know that that's their experience, but it's completely foreign to, to, to humanity. It's, it's completely inhumane. Do they understand the disgust with which society views them? Yes. What do they think about that? Uh, depending on the offender, they either feel that we as a society are the distorted ones, that we don't understand how beautiful this can be, that we don't understand uh, that what they were doing wasn't harmful, that we don't understand that a six-year-old, in fact, can consent. Uh, and others just don't care. We could tell in the beginning that something was different in these people, and it was something that was different in a way that they couldn't control. But we had no idea, is this the kind of thing that would be different from uh, uh, something that they learned over the course of life, or something that they, uh, 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 that they were born with? That sex network, which is cabled together, is all cabled through that same chunk of connective tissue, which I found was different in the pedophiles. So it's not that these areas of the brain are different in the pedophiles, it's that the network that they're supposed to form isn't connected properly. So it's accidentally identifying things in the environment that should evoke a parental nurturant instinct, but instead it's provoking a sexual and erotic instinct, almost like a literal cross-wiring in the brain. Uh, from all the science, yep. from all your science, did it answer the question, are pedophiles born or made? Interestingly, the, the science in general says that pedophiles appear to be born, not made. The stuff that we've seen that are different in pedophiles in their brain functioning uh, is all stuff that doesn't happen uh, during the course of life. Are you saying that for the pedophile, their attraction to children is natural? For they them? experience it as natural. They did not pick it. They come to realize it over the course of life. The way that most of them describe it uh, starts out like any of us. When they're, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, they get crushes on people around their age, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, and then most of us, as we grow older, we continue to get crushes on and experience attractions to people roughly around our age, growing into adulthood as we grow into adulthood. For the pedophiles, however, when they start becoming 14, 15, 16, they're still getting crushes and finding themselves attracted to 8, 9, 10 years old. So it takes them until there's enough contrast between their own age and the people they're attracted to before they start realizing there's something different about them. That implies it's not a choice for them, that it's actually a sexual orientation. Correct. All the evidence suggests that they did not pick to be attracted to children any more than the rest of us picked to be attracted to adults. So that's a big call, isn't it? Uh, it is a big call, uh, and, I don't, uh, and I don't make it easily. I don't think anybody makes it easily. So if it is biological, mm -hmm. if the brain is wired that way, mm -hmm. it also implies, doesn't it, that the wiring cannot be changed. There is no cure. That's what it seems to suggest now. I hesitate ever to say that the future will not produce some technology that I could not uh, could not predict. But we don't have any technology, we don't have any surgery, we don't have any intervention currently that really can impact the basic connective structure of the brain. No medication. Uh, no medication, no therapy, no surgery. They're, they're, nobody's uh, produced... Uh, well, aside uh, from castration. Uh, well, that's not exactly a cure. We're not, that wouldn't turn a pedophile, uh, castration wouldn't turn a pedophile into a non-pedophile. Castration, of course, removes a person's sex drive. Now, that can be very beneficial. A lot of people who are attracted to something that they cannot enact would rather live a life without a sex drive than a sex drive they have to spend every minute of every day actively suppressing. 
but it's not a cure in the sense that it's turning a pedophile into a non-pedophile, that they will now be attracted to adults and be able to, you know, have a relationship, you know, uh, uh, become a parent and so on. Dark triad of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. They are called dark because of their malevolent qualities. All three dark triad traits are conceptually distinct, although empirical evidence shows them to be overlapping. They are associated with a callous manipulative interpersonal style. Narcissism is characterized by grandiosity, pride, egotism, and a lack of empathy. Machiavellianism is characterized by manipulation and exploitation of others, an absence of morality, an emotional callousness, and a higher level of self-interest. Psychopathy is characterized by continuous antisocial behavior, impulsivity, selfishness, callous and unemotional traits, CU, and remorselessness. Narcissism. Individuals who score high on narcissism display grandiosity, entitlement, dominance, and superiority. Narcissism has been found to correlate positively with extroversion and openness and negatively with agreeableness. Narcissism has also been found to have a significant correlation with psychopathy. Psychopathy. Psychopathy is considered the most malevolent of the dark triad. Individuals who score high on psychopathy show low levels of empathy and high levels of impulsivity and thrill-seeking. With respect to the big five personality factors, psychopathy has been found to correlate negatively with agreeableness and conscientiousness. Psychopathy is a neuropsychiatric disorder marked by deficient emotional responses, lack of empathy, and poor behavioral controls, commonly resulting in persistent antisocial deviance and criminal behavior. Psychopathy, sometimes considered synonymous with sociopathy, is characterized by persistent antisocial behavior, impaired empathy and remorse, and bold, disinhibited, and egotistical traits. Psychopathy is characterized by diagnostic features such as superficial charm, high intelligence, poor judgment and failure to learn from experience, pathological egocentricity and incapacity for love, lack of remorse or shame, impulsivity, grandiose sense of self-worth, pathological lying, manipulative behavior, poor self-control, promiscuous sexual behavior, juvenile delinquency, and criminal versatility among others. Psychopaths may be manipulative, charming and exploitative, and behave in an impulsive and risky manner. They may lack conscience or guilt, and refuse to accept responsibility for their actions. Antisocial Personality Disorder Antisocial Personality Disorder, ASPD, describes a condition marked by patterns of manipulation tactics and violation of others. Someone with ASPD goes against society rules, and other behaviors that are more commonplace. ASPD is a particularly challenging type of personality disorder characterized by impulsive, irresponsible and often criminal behavior. Someone with ASPD will typically be manipulative, deceitful and reckless, and will not care for other people's feelings. Like other types of personality disorder, ASPD is on a spectrum which means it can range in severity from occasional bad behavior to repeatedly breaking the law and committing serious crimes. Psychopaths are considered to have a severe form of ASPD. A person with ASPD may exploit, manipulate or violate the rights of others lack concern, regret or remorse about other people's distress, behave irresponsibly and show disregard for normal social behavior have difficulty sustaining long-term relationships be unable to control their anger, lack guilt, or not learn from their mistakes, blame others for problems in their lives, repeatedly break the law. A person with ASPD will have a history of conduct disorder during childhood, such as truancy, not going to school, delinquency, for example, committing crimes or substance misuse, and other disruptive and aggressive behaviors. Sadism. Sadism involves deriving pleasure through others undergoing discomfort or pain. Individuals possessing sadistic personalities tend to display recurrent aggression and cruel behavior. Sadism can also include the use of emotional cruelty, purposefully manipulating others through the use of fear, and a preoccupation with violence.
the level and extent of sadistic violence may vary considerably, from infliction of mild pain in otherwise harmless love play to extreme brutality, sometimes leading to serious injury or death. The satisfaction of the sadist may result not from inflicting actual physical pain but rather from the mental suffering of the victim. Sexual urges may limit the level of violence, but in some cases the aggressive impulse becomes predominant and the sadist progresses to more extreme expressions of his violent tendencies. The term sadism is occasionally used outside the sexual context, to describe individuals who are purposely cruel or who seem to derive pleasure from humiliating and dominating others in social situations. There are four subtypes of sadism, termed enforcing sadism, explosive sadism, spineless sadism, and tyrannical sadism. Enforcing sadism. Hostility sublimated in the public interest, cops, bossy supervisors, deans, judges, possesses the right to be pitiless, merciless, coarse, and barbarous. Task is to control and punish, to search out rule breakers. Explosive sadism. Unpredictably precipitous outbursts and fury, uncontrollable rage and fearsome attacks, feelings of humiliation are pent up and discharged, subsequently contrite. Spineless sadism. Insecure, bogus, and cowardly, venomous dominance and cruelty is counterphobic, weakness counteracted by group support, public swaggering selects powerless scapegoats. Tyrannical sadism. Relishes menacing and brutalizing others, forcing them to cower and submit, verbally cutting and scathing, accusatory and destructive, intentionally surly, abusive, inhumane, unmerciful. There is renewed interest in studying sadism as a personality trait. Sadism joins with subclinical psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism to form the so-called dark tetrad, of personality. Sexual sadism disorder is the condition of experiencing sexual arousal in response to the extreme pain, suffering or humiliation of others.